Hi there, this is Frank. I'm doing this video, very first time I've ever done one of these where I put myself in a little square and then I gotta show you how I do things. So I'm gonna screw this up, I'm sure, royally, but I wanted to do a video quick about EV Next, you know, 4.2. I did the beta version. I just finished this little four minute short about five days ago and I put it on YouTube about four days ago. So anyway, you can watch it later and I'll show a little bit of it here just so you can see what it is. It's, it's basically called Cars Talk. And it's a little series I started, believe it or not, in 2002 using Lightwave 11.6 back if anybody remembers Lightwave. And these cars were the same cars and I had to port them over to Blender because I wanted to kind of automate the, the talking of the mouths, the flipping of the eyeballs and everything. But I want you to look and I'll, I'll start it here so you can really see it. If I could slow this down, it'd be great. Watch the shadows all around these. They chatter. They're different in every single frame. They're just chattering all over the place. You'll see it on this BMW up here, if you can see it, if it's got enough resolution for us to see it on there. And the shadows, look at the on the side, they're so ragged and they're, they're, every frame is different. Now, I kept my camera moving at all times and I have talking cars, so I don't think people notice it as much as they would if this was a professional video that you had to have this right. It's not cycles. It has the ray tracing of cycles, but it doesn't have the consistency between frames yet. I don't know if it's going to get better or what, but... So I'll show you a little bit in the After Effects file another problem, a major problem that I had in this, and that is this. So I have a, a little, one of the shots is this little yellow Pento car right here. What am I grabbing that for? That's because I don't know what I'm doing. Uh, the Pento right here is talking, and it's telling a story about a car chase it was in went on owner number seven, which they're giving their, 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 you know, they tell stories about their lives. You know, some of these cars have been around for 10 different owners, so, you know, now they're in a junkyard, and they can tell you all these stories. So it's kind of fun, and, it, and the characters are all really great characters. They're fun to animate, and they're fun to be with. So what happens here is... I'm going to shut off one of the layers that I had to fix this with, and I didn't have time really to, to figure out this, but here it is. Now watch in the background here. When a bright light happens, okay, and I'm going to move it down to here, what happens? Shadows are gone under the cars. The shadows are completely gone. Every time one of these flashes go off, the shadows disappear. Now I'll do it again here. All right, After Effects is screwing me up. Now watch, look, shadow gone, shadow gone, shadow gone, flicker on, on and off and off. I couldn't fix it. I couldn't fix it in the time. I couldn't figure it out. I couldn't get anyone that had already used this version to tell me what's going on. I have the largest amount of shadow mapping that I'm allowed, which is one gigabyte, and I raised everything else up like crazy, so I don't know what's going on here. When a bright light comes on, it seems like it's stealing the foreground shadows. Maybe it's stealing all the shadows. Who knows? Because I can't see back in the area back there. So the way I fixed it was I basically had to do two layers. And I had to make a layer without the flashing lights, which is this one. So there's no flashing lights in this one. And then I did this one. And I did a... Um, here we go. I did a cut line straight across, so I'd still get the reflections when one of these lights is on. You can see it reflecting on the back of this old 57 Chevy, but it will disappear at a certain point so I can keep the foreground shadows. And it only worked, it only worked for this. Shut up. Okay. It only worked for this one shot, so it would never work probably for a shot that you're going around, but it worked for this one, and I had to get the job done, so that's what I did. Now, it's a little more apparent. You can actually see these shadows because I can zoom in a little bit more on this BMW, this old, old model right there, and you'll notice that the shadow just starts ragged. It's just ragged as heck. See it right here? I mean, it's not, it's not what the polygons are shaped like. This is the shadow trying to figure out a ray tracing, tracing shadow off of this. The light is straight up above, about uh, 30 feet up in the air, because these are pretty much real-time, real measurements in all of real cars. 
So that was the problem. The major problem is the chattering and the uh, shadows just cutting off sometimes. And it does it. It did it in other scenes. I didn't know why it was doing it until I did this one with all these bullet shots going off. And then I really said, oh, because I had another shot behind this guy here that basically got bright and that shadow disappeared on that one too. So there is a problem with that. Uh, why didn't I use cycles? I'll tell you why. I'll show you my Blender file here real quick. This is my Blender file, okay? And what's happening here is you see that horizon glow in the background. See the stars in the sky? All right. This is why, I'll tell you first why I didn't use normal EV. Because the stars in the sky are being generated in the world texture space. They're a Verona or Verona texture with a map texture and all, and they give you different size stars, and I use a noise map to make them flicker and all. Problem is, is I couldn't use the world to give me fill light on these cars underneath them or anything. I couldn't give any fill light. Now, I know I could have composited and I can do all that, but I wanted to do it all in Blender, and I'll tell you why. This horizon glow is a faded PNG into black, right? And if you do any compression on this at all, once you get it to YouTube or Vimeo or wherever, it becomes just a band. A, it's like, let me look up, a solid band of blue. You can't even tell there's a gradation on it. So what I did was I rendered these out as PNGs, and I knew my color because my lighting was always the same, and I didn't do any color correction. I did nothing. Now, After Effects, I had to do that one, but I figured... That thing has so much going on with the, the, the sparks and the, the gunshots and everything, I got away with it. So I still did it as a 16-bit as a in After Effects, pretty much raw, uh, you know, with no compression. And it still sometimes, if you color correct it just a bit, make it a little brighter or darker, there it comes. Man, that gradation is gone. So I couldn't do that. Now, why couldn't I use cycles? Well, when I turn this on, you'll see that all of my things are you look at all those cameras those are all like 33 different camera setups with different motions and all i have to do is just turn each one on to do the shot over so now you'll see the bones actually warp the model and when they warp the model a lot like around the body uh, frames and everything these are low poly models and i'm using i'm not using um know subdivision surfaces and all because they're models that were tries back in the day and I didn't rebuild them I just made them what they were so they'd be consistent to all the other versions of these films I made so I was kind of stuck and so what happens is in cycles is when two polygons kind of fold up together like this if they overlap it shoots out a vertice into the heavens and it drags a polygon with it and you'll get these spikes like that all the time and I tried it with everything made in these cars you get these spikes everywhere and so couldn't use cycles because of the spiking couldn't use regular EV because uh, I was using stars in the background I couldn't get any fill and then I used EV next and EV next has shadows that chatter but because my cars are moving and the things are talking and everything I don't think people notice as much anyway that is what I wanted to talk to you about my problems with EV my problems with this but I have to tell you one thing what was really fun about doing it this way in blender was I'm using uh, sound to cycle so I do all the voices and and I modify the voices to sound like different characters and all and then I take the full soundtrack which is the whole scene and I'll show you why that works so fun if you watch these cars, they're all talking. This one's talking to this one. This one's talking to this one. This one comes. It's a scene. It's actors around a table all acting. That's what's really fun about this, which means that once I've set it up like this and have all the motions of all the actors, all of their eyes moving where I can move in and I can set my cameras and I can do dollies I can do whip pans from one to another. The timing is real critical, so you have to make sure in your edit that when you finally get your, your voices all edited together that you have a quick paced thing so you can do whips. I've had to change things and it does get a little dicey, but I've even got a workaround now on that one. 
So that was what was really fun was as a, as a real director that works with actors and all, it was fun that I had this setup to where, okay, I want to go to his reaction while he's talking. I'll do this. But instead, what I did, and I'll go to this shot, here is the actual finished product. Uh, this shot. This shot gives you an idea what was really fun. So here I have a car is talking about something, and I'm slowly dialing in on a side view of a guy that talks. Now he starts talking, and somebody else starts talking, and I whip over to him. He says his line. Then I can come back to him. I can move around him. I can do that throughout this. I don't have to do cuts. I can do whip pans. I can do all sorts of things that I couldn't do if I were just shooting these individuals. I'll put the link below. You can watch the whole thing and comment below what you think about this. But this is what I'm saying. Evie is not ready for video professional production. Not if you have moving camera, even if you don't have moving cameras. When my camera was setting still, it was still chattering. I don't know why. Uh, anyway. Give me uh, a comment below, like, subscribe, do all this stuff. I've got these videos coming out every couple of weeks now. I hope you enjoyed this. I might make more of these. I think I will uh, because there's a lot to learn and there's a lot to share. Have a great day. And again, comment below. Thanks a lot. Bye.